The Dolby Atmos Render is the software component of both the Atmos Mastering Suite and Production Suite. The renderer receives audio channels from Pro Tools in the form of beds and objects. It combines the object audio with panning data from the Pro Tools mixer and the Dolby Atmos Panner plugin, and it renders the outputs to your speakers and headphones. The renderer can also record your final Atmos master file and generate downmixes to other formats. The Dolby Atmos renderer has numerous settings, but to get started, you'll need to set the audio input and output preferences. In this case, we're using the production suite on a Pro Tools HD native system, so we'll choose Core Audio as our audio system. Set the input to Dolby Audio Bridge and the output to HD native. For Atmos music production, you should also make sure that headphone processing is enabled and the renderer mode is set to binaural. Over in Pro Tools, you establish network communication with the renderer via the peripheral setup window. In the Atmos tab, check Enable and choose your renderer in the RMU host pop-up. The Dolby Atmos renderer stores the layout of your speakers so that it can generate an appropriate monitor output. You can also set up how your speakers will be used to check down mixes. You also need to assign the outputs to your headphones where you'll be monitoring the binaural mix. Each Dolby mixing project may use its own layout of audio beds and objects. This is mapped out using the renderer's input configuration tool. Here, you'll assign the 128 available channels to beds or objects. You can name the channels and also assign them to custom groups. In this example, we'll simply use the default configuration of one bed and 118 ungrouped objects. Your Pro Tools session needs output routing to match the renderer project. The I.O. Setup bus page in Pro Tools has a neat feature that pulls in your channel config directly from the renderer. However, object paths default to mono. For music projects, you'll probably want to use some stereo object paths, which you'll need to configure manually. Let's first remove all the mono object paths from both the bus page and the outputs page. Now create a stereo path called object 1112 that routes to outputs 11 and 12. In the bus page, unfold the path to see the mono subpaths and map them to objects 11 and 12. This creates a link between the audio path and the Atmos panning information, enabling the render to correctly generate mix outputs. Continue to add as many mono or stereo object paths as you need for your project. With the session running, the Dolby Atmos renderer provides visual feedback of audio and panning activity. Audio signals are indicated on the left, and object panning positions are shown in the 3D theater view to the right. In the next videos, we'll explore how to set up your Pro Tools session for mixing music in Dolby Atmos.